Three times you shall keep a feast to me in the year. You shall keep the feast of unleavened bread. You shall eat unleavened bread seven days, as I commanded you, at the time appointed in the month of Abib. For in it you came out of Egypt. None shall appear before me empty. And the feast of harvest, the first fruits of your labours which you have sown in your field, and the feast of, of ingathering at the end of the year, when you have gathered in the fruit of your labours from the field. Three times in the year all your males shall appear before the Lord God. You shall not offer the blood of my sacrifice with leavened bread, nor shall the fat of my sacrifice remain until morning. The first of the first fruits of your land you shall bring into the house of the Lord your God. You shall not boil a young goat in its mother's milk. My name's Arthur. Thank you for joining me as we continue to share in Exodus chapter 23, verses 14 to 19. As the Lord continues to discuss with Moses and the children of Israel the ordinances and judgments by which the nation is to operate, based on the covenant that they have made and the agreement that they have made to keep the Ten Commandments. And this section outlines three points on their annual calendar where all the males of the nation were to gather together before the Lord. And when they came together, none shall appear before me empty. They were to come with thanksgiving. They were to come with the produce of the harvest, the first fruits at the beginning of the harvest season and the produce at the end of the harvest season. The first commandment was, I am the Lord God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. And so to remember who the Lord is, the Lord commands them to have three periods of celebration in the year, where they offer sacrifices of thanksgiving for the goodness of the Lord to them. Many more details are given later in Exodus and in Leviticus of these three feasts. But they are the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Feast of Weeks, and the Feast of Ingathering. But they have other names as well. The Feast of Unleavened Bread begins with Passover. Passover is particularly celebrating the deliverance of the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. And so the comment is made in our reading, At the appointed time in the month of Abib, for in it you came out of Egypt. So this corresponds with spring. They followed a lunar calendar, but it roughly equates to our Easter time, the beginning of spring in Israel. At the Passover, the children of Israel in Egypt had killed the Passover lamb on the 14th day of the month and eaten it that evening with unleavened bread after splashing the blood on the doorpost and lintel of their houses. That night, Pharaoh said, get out, and so they left Egypt on that night. The following week they ate unleavened bread, and so they were to celebrate the deliverance from Egypt every year at the same time with a Passover feast and unleavened bread, because this was a new beginning, unleavened bread pointing to a new beginning in their lives and a new beginning in the year. This was the time in which they would be finished with eating last year's food and could eat the fresh food of the new year. On the first day of the week following Passover, they would bring the green heads of the barley into the temple to celebrate the harvest that they were just about to bring in. And uh, seven weeks later, they would come for the Feast of Weeks where they would celebrate the beginning of the harvest with produce that they had harvested. A time of harvest is a time of great joy. But these feasts pointed to the future as well as the past. For, in fact, Jesus is the Passover lamb that takes away the sin of the world. He was crucified at the time they were slaughtering the Passover lambs as they celebrated the Passover feast. And 
the Holy Spirit descended to form the church at the time they were offering the first fruits in the temple at the Feast of Weeks, Pentecost. Harvest of the summer crops would come in through the summer period. And so in autumn they were to have another feast here called the Feast of Ingathering at the end of the year. But this feast is also known as the Feast of Booths for it reminds the children of Israel that for the 40 years in the wilderness God provided for them continually. And so as the harvest is finished and they're looking to a winter period they rejoice that the Lord has provided for them in the harvest that which they need for the winter period. It is the fruit of their labours. And so in winter, the land rests and the people rest in the fruit of their labours. That's the pattern that God would establish for the nation, tied in with the seasons, but for them to understand that it was the Lord who gave them the harvest. And so they would come and celebrate before him with offerings of thanksgiving. None shall appear before me empty. We don't go before the Lord for what we can get. We are to come before the Lord for what we can give, give glory to him and encouragement to one another. It was up to the men to gather as the heads of the household so that every household was represented But depending on the family situation, the women sometimes had to stay behind. We see that in the story of Elkanah and Hannah. When Samuel was born, Hannah did not go up to the feast until young Samuel was weaned. Now, it is a time of sacrifice. There were major sacrifices associated with the Passover, the Passover lamb, and with the feast of ingathering for that would line up with the Day of Atonement, details of which will be given later. But the comment that is made here is, you shall not offer the blood of my sacrifice with leavened bread. In the sacrifice, they were to burn the fat. It would be a time of celebration, so the bulk of the sacrifices were peace offerings, whereby the people brought their animals, they sacrificed them to the Lord, they gave a portion to the priest, They burned the fat on the fire, but they took the rest of the flesh home and shared and ate together. So that's why it's called a feast. It was focused on giving thanks to the Lord and so sharing that meal together, as it were, with the Lord by giving some to the priests and the fat was burned on the altar, but it was to be completely burned up. And they were not to eat leaven bread. Leaven speaking of sin and corruption. But as they came together, it was a new beginning, a fresh start for them, a renewal. As the Lord renews us every morning, and so there are seasons in our life as well where we can be renewed before him. And the focus is to bring the first fruits. They will bring first fruits of the land in terms of the crops but they will also bring young animals to sacrifice and to eat and so the first of the first fruits of your land you shall bring into the house of the Lord your God God gets the first portion give him the first portion of your day and you shall not boil a young goat in its mother's milk the sacrifices at that time would include peace offerings where young goats a year old and sheep a year old would be sacrificed at Passover it was to be roasted but in any case in preparing that meal the instruction was not to cook the meat in its mother's milk and Jewish people today consequently refrain from having milk products and meat products in the same meal you shall not appear before me empty. The first of the first fruits of your land you shall bring to the Lord your God.